Free Alabama Movement, a group focused on prison reform, it's reporting that one of its incarcerated leaders was brutally attacked by two prison guards while handcuffed. Robert Earl Council, known as Kinetic Justice, he's the co-founder of Free Alabama Movement and is serving time at Limestone Correctional Facility. He was reportedly being led to the shower when he was pushed to the floor, beaten, sprayed with mace, and then returned to a cell. For more, I'm joined by Pastor Kenneth Glasgow of the Free Alabama Movement. First, Pastor, can you just give us the latest on Kinetic Justice's condition? Well, the latest on his condition is that he has a couple of scars on his face um, and, of course, on his wrist pertaining to this. One of the things that we know is approximately at 845, while in handcuffs and on the way to the shower, Kinetic Justice was shoved to the floor. Then he was pushed uh, uh, into a janitor's closet by the COs, you know, and they showed this. Once inside the closet, they began choking Connecticut around his neck, asking him rhetorically, you're going to tell I and I on me too? You're going to tell I and I on me too? Then this officer, CO Dozier, said, hold up your shoulders, hold up, hold up. And then they reached around him, and they sprayed him with half a can of mace directly into his eyes, his nose, and his ears and mouth. What a lot of people don't understand is when you get sprayed directly into your mouth and your nose and your ears and all, you can't breathe, okay? The spray was so strong that uh, his shoulders got up from Connecticut. He was coughing. Both officers, they ran out of the closet, leaving Connecticut, laying on the floor by himself, still handcuffed and still choking. The COs then called for backup. The entire, when the, you know, the entire incident was witnessed by three uh, people who are, were already in the showers, one of them or two of them being members of the Free Alabama Movement, rather than the reprimand to the officers for doing wrong, rather than the supervisor, the sergeant, or the warden addressing their officers for jumping on somebody, first of all, that was handcuffed, they turned around uh, uh, and refused to let Connecticut make a phone call or complain against the COs, placed Connecticut justice in a day cell with no running water, no clothes, no toiletries, no writing material, no linen, where he remained there for about five days. And, and then all of a sudden they tried to come back and give him uh, uh, charges for jumping on the officers. Pastor, when in fact, the officers jumped on him. Pastor, do we know what spurred this reaction from the prison guards? Did something happen beforehand? Did something cause this? Well, ever since Connecticut had been on there, they've been teasing him and harassing him and, 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 and going after him and Brother James Pleasant, who is Brother Doc T. Uh, James Pleasant over there uh, that are locked up in Limestone. Let me give you a picture. Limestone used to have what is called a dog pound, where they lock people up in a secluded area where they can't be seen, they can't see the general population, nobody can see them. If you don't even go down there, it's like so many feet away from general population. If you don't go down there or know it's there, you don't even know the people are over there. Very secluded, like an island, so to speak. And that was used for people who had AIDS and HIV. When the Department of Justice and we... Uh, in 2010, 9, and 11, and 12, mm -hmm. we fought them about locking people up that had HIV and AIDS. They start putting them in general population, and then after the prison strike, they start using it for a secluded place where they can lock people up with the Free Alabama Movement and people that they wanted to retaliate on. Right. They mostly use it for places where they done beat up an inmate and they need to hide him for three or four weeks in order for him to heal. Pastor, and we know that you are fighting for prisons rights as well as kinetic justice. We'll continue to follow that. We'll have to leave it there. Pastor Kenneth Glasgow, founder and president of the Ordinary People Society. Thank you so much. Thank you.